I don't. Yeah. Let's yep. uh let's wrap up with this. This is number five on the list of topics. Um, and we've been at this for a little while, so at this point, I think we'll probably hit the one hour mark. Not that we're too worried about it, but the college football playoff expansion. Sam, you jumped in on a on a couple of topics. Uh, I was I'm not going to say fighting. I was having a nice, friendly debate with I think civil it's, discourse. It's yeah, okay. C- it's important in this world to have civil discourse. Yes, I think it's CFB nerds, and there were some followers of theirs that were also arguing like, "There's not even four good teams. Why should we expand the playoff?" And my thought process was, well, there are four good teams every year. There's there's four teams that are the best, and we rarely get them because we the the college football playoff committee looks at who is the most deserving along with who is the best, right? And sometimes it gets crossed and, and you have like an Alabama that didn't win their division over like an Ohio State that won the Big Ten, but got blown out by 30 points at Purdue and that kind of... Sometimes you have those type of things. But I think the best course of action for me would be a 16-team playoff. Uh, I I have completely switched my stance on this. I was a four-team guy for going back as far as I can even think of of this playoff thing. I, I think 16 is the way to go. It gives more opportunities for teams that maybe get hot towards the end of the year. Uh, it still makes the regular season mean something. And I think that's what people aren't aren't realizing. Like, just because you put in 16 teams doesn't mean the regular season doesn't mean anything. You got 130 teams. You got to dwindle that down. That would st- Even 16 would still be less of a percentage than any other uh, league or division or anything that's out there. I-, I think 16 is the way to go. Now, Sam, if you want to go ahead and jump in here, uh, give, give me your thoughts on this. All right, so so here's here's the thing. It all depends when you're talking about the playoff. What are you looking to achieve? If you're looking for the best team in the country, a playoff is not the way to do it because you know you look at any any tournament uh, is going to have upsets. You're not necessarily getting the best team. I mean, look at the NFL. How often do you get like number one seed versus number one seed? Oh, very rare. It happens. It happens, but not not often. Um, you know, the NCAA tournament. You haven't but, had one versus one versus one versus one since two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say. And before that, it was a, a, a oh, substantially long yeah, time, like the eighties or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was yeah, it was like twenty years. Yeah, and I, mean, I think back to both times the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and the Giants were there as a wild card, right? Yeah, you're you're, you're making the wild card and you're winning the Super Bowl, are you the best team in the NFL, or are you the team that won the the tournament that is the NFL playoff? The Washington Nationals last year were in the play-in game. Yeah, so if you're looking to determine the best team, a playoff is not the way to do it. If you want the best team, there's analytics that you you can really crunch the numbers in a way that the BCS never could. The BCS computers were not a complete system. I think these days there's enough statistical information that you could account for opponents and you, you can get there. Um, so it, that's if you're looking to find the best team. If you're looking to find the most deserving team and still keep uh, some, you know, the regular season meaningful, then I, I think an eight-team way, eight-teamer is the way to go. Um, and have only conference champions can make it. Uh, you, so you got to win your conference. And the only way you win your conference is having a good regular season and winning the, the conference championship game. Um, that's, that makes up your playoff. Are you going to get the best teams in there every year? Not necessarily, but you know, you're, you're getting the most deserving teams because you've won your conference. Chris, what, what do you think on this? I mean, you, you know me, I've been a, I've been a 16 team truther forever. Um, I just, I just believe that every other level of football does it. I don't know why major college football feels like it's this undue burden that we cannot get over. It's just appalling to think about. Um, and, and, and I think that would give you the most deserved a champion but the other part of it is we have to stop looking at the very end of the race and think that's the only thing that matters there's 130 college football teams out there and and one gets to be the champion 
And, you know, if you're Memphis and you make it in as one of the at-large teams or, or, or Central Florida or Cincinnati or Boise and you beat a big boy, you upset somebody in this thing and you make it to the Final Four or to the Elite Eight stage, that's a big deal. That's a win. All across our country, to my knowledge, there is one college university that doesn't hang Final Four banners, that doesn't hang Elite Eight banners, and that is UCLA. Yeah, That's it. Everybody else, if you make it really far and then eventually lose, they celebrate that. And they say, look how far you made it. You did something that nothing – this hadn't happened in our school in years. It is really think, hard to win national championships yes, in every sport. And we only look at the very end, and we don't look at the path anywhere else in college football. And we say, oh, but well, you got a Rose Bowl win. Oh, well, you want a Sugar Bowl. or North-. No one gives a shit about that, okay? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody cares that you won a big bowl game because today, because that bowl game means nothing, half the players don't even play in it. That's I don't know about half, but I I do see your point there. Half the uh, players that are going for the NBA, they're going to the, the NFL, pros in yeah. the NFL. Half of the players that are eligible to not play, yeah, don't, they don't play. play. That's a, you you've got a very valid point. The sixteen team thing for me makes the most sense. With eight, I don't think there's any way that you still get a group of five team in there. Uh, I I think if you're doing eight, you still can't do conference champions because you can't there's have ten conferences. It, well, it, so you do well. Not only that, but I'm talking about you just the power, the power five. Five. So yeah, you do sure. five, and then you get three at large bids. Yeah, but it, but doing that, it, if Northwestern had had won the Big Ten championship last season. Uh, well, not last, the the season before. Year before. The season before, uh, yeah. There's still no reason why they should be in a college football playoff with these supposed eight best teams. Yeah, but if you do four, 16. There would be a four-loss team in the playoff. Right. With the 16, you can do your Power 5 champions. You will at least include one group of five team and maybe more. Maybe, yeah. maybe double, depending on what rankings and whatever you want to set. Uh, because obviously, I don't know that there's a really perfect way to do this. But with 16, you can get in everybody that deserves an opportunity. And and you don't have to worry about it. And then you've got your home field advantage kind of situations where one is going to play 16 and two will play 15, et cetera. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said, I'd say 12 would be enough. Four would get a top uh, – or top four would get a buy. He said, regardless of how many you expand to, there will always be a team that thinks they deserve to be in. I think it's easier to tell a team that's ranked number 17 that yeah. they didn't deserve to be in as opposed to – a Central Florida that's undefeated and ranked number nine and didn't get in. I think when and, you get and I'm into not that trying to say, and we're not trying to say that well, we think that number sixteen team can win the national championship. Yeah, we're not saying that, that at all. A, a, it can happen. Guess what? It cannot happen if they're not allowed in. That's right. But but even if the end doesn't mean sixteen never beats one. Hell, what? It wasn't until Virginia where 16 had never beaten a one seed in the college basketball tournament. There's four of them every year, and we still let them in. Like We don't don't say, oh, but you don't get to make it because you've never won, so there's no reason in being here. Right, so I think I should clarify. I also agree that a 16 team is the way to go, but where I'm going with the eight is if if you're looking at the most – if you want truly the most deserving, um, and and – while also keeping the integrity of the regular season. But I, I agree with you. I think a 16 is the way to go because, you know, you've got an Alabama who doesn't make the conference championship this past year who absolutely could have gone to the playoff and no one would have really complained. I, I don't think. I mean, that was a hell of a team that didn't make it into the playoff. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you got you got to account for that. You know, <clears throat> had Northwestern beaten Ohio State, in, you know, the year before last, in my scenario, they get into the playoff. Yeah. But Ohio State was a phenomenal team. And, and Ohio absolutely... State gets in, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if they're 16, so, then then the, both of those teams get in because the conference there's a, champions there's enough room for all of them. get in. Yeah, so you get conference champions and then a number of at-larges. And um, if you want to you – know, if you really want to be fair, then you give every conference, you know, all five uh, – group of five schools get in there. Will they be cannon fodder? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But, now, now, if we but, go to 16, but, I actually wouldn't be upset with making all 10 conferences, conference champions in. I would, I would be absolutely okay with that. Because, yeah, you're right. Every tournament has cannon fodder. 
every tournament has those teams that are just proud as hell to be there. And, and the crazy thing is, every now and again, about, you get Boise State over Oklahoma. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> you don't get Cinderella if you don't invite her to the ball. That's true. That's true. Now we got to worry about independence and whatnot. Obviously, Notre Dame. Oh, oh, oh like screw those in. independent. Join the conference. Notre Dame, join the damn conference. Uh, yeah, but but the other ones don't get the opportunity to join the conference. New Mexico State. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, they yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. There's there, there's these little dinky ass conferences would take some of those teams. You think so? You, if yeah, if they were yeah. to pick up the oh, phone yeah. and they called the MAC or no, maybe not the MAC. Somebody is it, you know the Southwest Sun Conference Belt. or something. Sun Belt. Yeah, you think yeah. that New Mexico State couldn't get in the Sun Belt? Come on, man. I mean, they they got left out of the. Uh, uh, the Mountain West. So I don't know because they, we used to have the, the Mountain West is way whack. bigger than the Sun Belt, and at some point in time, you just figure this thing out. Yeah, and, and yeah. I mean, you got the Sun Belt, you got Conference USA. I mean, those you don't you nix can... you don't nix a good idea because you got three winklings that nobody wants. Okay, there's a lot of schools out there that don't have a football program. So yeah, if Liberty he, lost their football program, nobody's going to cry for them because they nope. can't join a conference. No. Or BYU, they however. Keep it. Like BYU is on on the other side. Like BYU is closer yeah. to Notre Dame than they end, or than they are New Mexico. That's State. right. No, BYU. Yeah, if, like, if, so. if BYU wanted to join a conference, they, they would join a conference. They if Notre Dame could. wanted to join a conference, their every conference would let would want Notre Dame in. That's right. Um, yeah. 100%. I, I think the same the same is true with Army and Navy. Like yep. if they wanted to be a part of the conference, and if you're in this situation where all, only conference champ or all conference champions get in, now all of a sudden the impetus is there yeah. to join a conference. That's, That's a good right. point. That's a good point. No, I think I, I think you could fix all these problems by just problem solving it. I mean, just because just because there's there's difficulties doesn't mean you don't do something big or good or right. You you just get it. And yeah, you and don't you don't legislate to the exception. That's right. That's there true. you go. That's a that's a very good way of putting that. Um, I that's all that I've got for today. Does anybody else have anything they want to hit on? No, man, it's fun. Sam, appreciate you coming on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, thanks for having me. Um, I cannot wait. Again, to plug uh, Thursday night, um, I cannot stress enough how much fun this is. Oh, yeah. Gary, you, you, we've been doing this with the Westlaw Pirates for 10 years, and it's just an absolute ball. Gary, you were on with us last year. Yes. Um, had a blast. Chris, I know there's no Avengers movie coming out this year, so we can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> I did that against my will. I was really excited about being on with you guys. And that, I know, that, anybody I know. who knows me would say, would he rather go watch the Avengers on opening night or talk football draft for two, three hours? That That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. That was a gift from somebody that I had to take. I can understand it. Just, I can understand. Just bust your chops, man. Just no, <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I did it. I, look, I don't I, – like, I'm an old man. I, I, I'd walk out of the room if there's 11 people in there, and I went and sat in that thing with – 2,000 people, all right? Yeah. I didn't enjoy it at it, all. It is so much fun. We have such a great time. And um, anyone who can jump on and listen to us live, I can't wait to interact with people. We had some callers or some listeners last year jump in, in a little bit later on. And it was fantastic. So um, very much looking forward to that. I can speak for both John and Scuzz. Uh, we're all excited to uh, to really finally get this together with you guys, and we just can't wait for Thursday night. Oh, it's going to be a good time. 8 p.m. Central Time. We will be live streaming. Uh, I hope everybody's going to be on at the at the right time. Uh, we may have some people join a little bit later, but I, I know this. Uh, us three will be there at 8 p.m., rocking and rolling, giving you updates and, uh, and letting you know what we think about what's going on. And obviously, anybody that wants to jump into the chat, uh, all the guys on Twitch, on YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook, it's going to be a blast, and then you can go grab the podcast from the Westlot Pirates feed after that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Sam, we do appreciate you hopping in. Everybody go follow him on Twitter, N-U-M-B, uh, Tenor 21 on Twitter, or you can just go follow at Westlot Pirates. Uh, you can always find Chris and myself on Twitter, uh, at Winning Cures, or at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini. All that fun stuff. Make sure you share the show out. Subscribe on the podcast. Leave a nice review. Boys, I think that's going to cut it for today. We will, uh, we will see everybody again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show.